The tragedy in Kashmir is not that it is a militarized state, nor that the Disturbed Areas Act of the Indian Constitution is a way of life here. The tragedy is not that every day is a battle here, and that at the end of each day, the body count serves merely for statistical purposes. The army versus the militants, us versus them. The tragedy is that Omar Khayyam's proverb, if there is a paradise on earth, it is here, it is here, it is here, no longer holds true. None of us think of Kashmir as paradise on earth anymore. What's worse is that we have become desensitized to bloody carnage as a way of life here. This shocking desensitization is what prompted this documentary. The untold story of Kashmiri's will for freedom, their pain and their strength deserves to be acknowledged. As two Mumbai-based journalists, we decided to put aside our conventional tools and instead choose film as the medium to portray the invisible Kashmir. Walking down the streets of Srinagar, it's not easy to shrug off the feeling of being under constant surveillance. We met 66-year-old shopkeeper Bashir Bhatt, who echoed a common sentiment. The government can do what it feels like here. Sometimes they cut our phone lines. We get electricity only for a few hours in winter. Curfew is imposed every evening. Anything can happen any time. People here are used to these things. No one cares about life or death anymore. Guns, bombs and death are a part of our life. Our children don't know any better, but we do. Whether it's rural Kashmir or the city of Srinagar, children here, more often than not, enter school under the shadow of the gun. Walking past gun-toting soldiers in uniform, going through barricades, watching their parents being frisked and being frisked themselves is normal. Sadly, none of the tiny tots know how abnormal this really is. Most of them may never find out. Are the children frisked every day when they enter the school? Yes, we do that. Uh, we do that. This is the reason why I mentioned that this at times gets used. To avoid that, we do that. So does it at the same time leave an impact on the child? Like it's studying under the shadow of the gun? No, uh, they understand. We they understand this aspect that uh, this part of the security we have to follow, and we have made them understand that this is nothing against them, but just to prevent them being forced to do something. Just like the two schoolgirls holding hands may not know that their school building, one of the oldest schools in Kashmir was destroyed, never to be rebuilt. The crumbling structure stands as a mute witness to the brutal violence, as well as to the resilient spirit of its children, who look death in the face every day and smile.
The Bait ul Hilal Orphanage is located at Jawahar Nagar in Srinagar. Run by the Jammu and Kashmir Yatim Trust, the orphanage has more than 3,000 children from all over the valley under its care. Here, every need of the child, physical, mental, educational and spiritual are all well catered to. Approximately rupees 2000 is spent on each child every month. Watching the children getting dressed for school, the closeness between them is hard to miss. Going about his daily routine, like the others around him, was 10-year-old Ghazi Hassan. His story is one of intense trauma, but also of immense hope. 
He was brought to the orphanage from his home in Dora district five years ago. Ghazi was just three or four years old when his father, mother, sister, aunt and uncle were shot by unidentified gunmen at his home one night. It is believed that his uncle was a militant. Ghazi was hiding under a bench during the massacre. He is the only survivor. Ghazi, when I saw him for the first time, he was not uh, even, uh, he would not stand in upright position. He would not uh, talk, he would not see to you. Uh, I mean, uh, his eyes were down and uh, he would not uh, react the way normally children react. Uh, but uh, having seen all the years, five years now, when we took him from that place, uh, right now he's altogether a different guy, given an atmosphere wherein he could groom. I don't call it the best atmosphere, but at least it, it is better than wherein he was. Was that uh, on that fateful night, uh, probably in 1997, uh, some 20 to 25 odd gunmen who were uh, wearing a uniform came to his house and then uh, they started uh, firing indiscriminately in the night. And on that fateful night, he lost his father, his mother, his uncle, one of his aunts, uh, his one sister, and some other people were wounded seriously there. And then he was left out because uh, he was uh, hiding somewhere in a shell. How or old was he then? He was three, or three to four, yeah. But he couldn't just uh, tell you anything about that episode. He was not actually speaking out. After one and a half year, he for the first time talked about that incident. Actually, when, when he was brought to me, to this institution, I straight away went to the psychiatric hospital. I didn't take him with, since I'm a doctor, there were so many people who were friends, and they came to me, uh, we just discussed, and we just kept on watching him, and they advised some particular uh, things, and we acted upon, they said, with due course of time, he will come back, and he came back to his own. After uh, almost 18 months, he talked, and he talked frequently. Uh, there was uh, no uh, other symptom that could uh, say that he was a deaf or dumb. It was not like that, but he had some emotional stress, and he got out of that, and then he started talking freely. Now, you are in which class? Third. And what you want to do? Doctor. At the time when I asked him, what does he want to become? If you interview any child of four or five years, he will say, I want to become a doctor, I want to become an engineer, I want to become a pilot. But at that time, he said, no, I want to carry a gun, I want to kill all those persons who killed my parents. And uh, I believed him. Uh, he doesn't have relations here. He doesn't want to go back on festivals. He doesn't want to go back on Eid. He loves this place so much so that he doesn't want to go out even. I mean, if somebody comes and wants him to take to an excursion or picnic, he resists at times. It's me or some other people who just prevail upon and tell him, Bita jao. He used to just uh, come out of his bedding uh, in the mid of the night or in the start or in the late nights and he used to roam about. He wouldn't disturb anybody, but he would disturb them by stepping over them. He would not cry, but uh, he would wet his bed. There's a lot of urination also, uh, nightmares. Uh, he would tell you in the daytime that, uh, I was frightened. This is one of the responses. This is one of the stress responses. Patient is faced with stress. Suppose. Somebody's father dies, particularly if you see. A father dies, a mother dies, and the patient starts an uresis. So this is one of the responses. But after four sessions, three or four sessions, we were 
uh, in fact, successful around 40, 50 percent that he was not able to then, we shifted his attention to other things, from the trauma to his studies to playing. And presently, if you go to that place, you will see Ghazi is well. The echoes of Ghazi's laughter brought home the truth of what Dr. Mushtaq Murgoob, head of the Department of Psychiatric Diseases at the Hospital for Psychiatric Diseases, Srinagar, said. Our children have bruises of the mind. Generations are growing up in fear and hate. So unknown, so unexplored is the plight that no one, not the government, nor the scores of humanitarian organizations we have all over, have taken adequate note of it. Children account for 38% of the valley's population. Taking into account the impact of violence in Kashmir from psychiatrists, one can gauge the extent of damage done to the very fabric of the entire society. In any case, even if psychiatric help was sought, there just aren't enough facilities. There is only one psychiatric hospital, less than 10 psychiatrists and very few counsellors in the whole of Kashmir Valley. This translates into an incredible statistic at the Hospital for Psychiatric Diseases. A doctor sees over 60 patients a day, which, a psychiatrist said, is at least 52 more than he should. Uh, how many patients do you see a day, on an average? On an average, we see around about 200 to 300 patients in our OPD uh, per day at Psychiatric Disease Hospital. Uh, it used to be, uh, say, in nine, uh, 19, nine, 19 or 89, some uh, the per year uh, patients which used to come to that hospital was 10,000. But presently it has gone up to 50,000 per year. At the same orphanage, we found 8-year-old Umar Zaid. His father was a Hezbollah Mujahideen commander, gunned down by Indian security forces in 1999. Unable to take care of her six children, his mother was compelled to give him up so he could have a chance at a better future. We asked Umar a few questions. Where is your mother? Where is your dad? Where is she? What will you become? Tell me about it. I want it. Where is your mother? Will you become a doctor? Engineer नहीं बनोगे, teacher नहीं बनोगे, cricketer नहीं बनोगे, मुजाहिद बनोगे। वो क्या करते थे? कौन? तुम्हारे daddy? मुजाहिद था। मुजाहिद का मतलब क्या होता है? मुजाहिद लोग क्या करते हैं? Army को मारते। सबको मार के क्या मिलेगा तुम्हें? पैसे पैसे मिलेंगे कौन देगा पैसे तुम्हें अफसर अफसर कौन सा वाला अफसर आर्मी का अफसर तो पुलिस वाला तो मुजाहिद का अफसर मुजाहिद का अफसर कितने पैसे देगा तुम्हें बहुत 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 पैसे देगा फिर वो क्या करोगे पैसों से तुम माँ को दूंगा His responses left us stunned. In conservative Kashmir, where breadwinning is mostly left to the male, Umar Zaid is defined an orphan, one of the 17,000 or so there. He also belongs to a subgroup in that burgeoning population, children prone to violence, who see the gun as the absolute solution, the ultimate source of power. A statement by author Eleanor Farjon came to mind. Bruised minds do not pass, but repeat themselves like the seasons of the year. 
children believe what they see around them and for the children in kashmir what they see simply reinforces their belief that violence is the answer to violence cycles of violence are being perpetuated here and this pathological damage to generations of kashmiris remains unacknowledged by the world outside with more questions than ever before we venture to thrall thrall located 60 kilometers from shrinagar is surrounded by high mountain ranges and thick forests the beauty of the place held us spellbound green fields cold fresh water streams and the gentle rain lulled us into a world where violence was unimaginable ironically thrall we learned was notorious as a hotbed of militant activity there was no visible armed presence here and we found the change unnerving although the feeling of being watched never really left us at umar zaid's house his elder sister shakila spoke to us about her life in thrall we asked her if like umar she also thought that violence was normal leaving umar zaid's house we couldn't help but realize that two siblings can have varying responses to the same tragedy did umar zaid's sister not want to take up arms because she was more mature or was it because of her gender culturally were boys more prone to violence than girls kids actually get impacted by what's happening outside their homes as well as what's happening inside it just reminds me of an incident early 90s you know when there was uh, an amazing amount of open support for whatever is happening here on the ground in terms of uh, the militant movement i remember having seen kids they used to play militants militants you know one uh, one guy would play militant another guy would play some kind of a supporter another guy would play some kind of an army chap or a, or a policeman but that slowly 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 vanished as as the as the openness of the displayed support vanished that that also that also finished so what i am trying to say is that the children here have actually gone through a very transforming period which is not absorbed at the same pace uh for example you don't see any kids playing militant militant these days because uh, it it can attract a totally different kind of a response from from uh, from family from passers by from a policeman whoever so uh, you don't just you know this this actually pushes a child beyond his capacity to try and internalize it which which i think which i think creates creates problems for example i i've seen children you know children used to talk a lot about it i i i i have seen children talking about what was happening around them because it was so visible they were seeing it they would talk talk about it and they would hear other people adults in the family and outside in the school children talking about it all the time we caught up with shakila ahmed a student in the village of badgam and later spoke to sisters kosar and kusuma who lived in an orphanage because their father was shot by the security forces he too was a militant agar aapko choose karna ho to army aur militants ke beech aap kis ko choose karenge kisi ko bhi nahi aap chahte hai ki chalo acha hua army wala mara ya acha hua militant mara hum bolte hain sabhi zinda rehne chahiye agar army mar jaye to hum kehte hain acha ho gaya acha ho gaya जहत होता है एक तरह का जहत होता है जो अल्लाह ने खुद फरमाया है जहत क्या होता है लेकिन कुछ लोग उसका गलत गलत से इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं हम हम उसे जहत नहीं कहते तो अगर अगर कल आपके पास गन होता तो क्या आप आने वालों को मारते 
क्योंकि उन्होंने हमारा बाप शहीद किया है इसलिए मैं बोलती हम बोलते हैं हमें जो हमें अपना सहारा था वो टूट गया अब क्या हम करेंगे इसलिए हम यहाँ आए हैं नहीं तो हम यहाँ नहीं होते हम अपने अपने घरों में होते हैं हाँ यही यही वाक़ होता है कि एक बहन होती है जिसका भाई इन ये शहीद होता है ये कुछ होता है उन्हीं वजह से ऐसा लगता है कल आज इसका भाई है कल मेरा भी भाई होगा वजह से बहुत कम तो क्या आपको लगता है कि आर्मी वालों के पास कोई मकसद था आपके पास आपके पास फादर को तैयार वो ऐसे वो जहालत करते हैं तो कुछ पता नहीं होती है वो ऐसे मारते हैं वो सिर्फ ये काम है मारना तो क्या मिलिटेंटों का काम नहीं है मारना सिर्फ आर्मी वालों का ही है वो तो मारते हैं ऐसे मिलिटर नहीं मारते हैं मिलिटर मारते हैं मगर मारते हैं जो जब कोई वजह होता है वो ऐसे ही मारते हैं अच्छा तो ये आपको ये आपको कैसे पता माँ ने बताया माँ ने आज़ादी का मतलब क्या है आपके आज़ादी का मतलब ये है कि हम अपनी मर्जी से जीना चाहते हैं किसी दबाव में नहीं रह कर जीना चाहते तो आप अपनी मर्जी से जीना का आपको जो आप जो जीना चाहते हैं वो अब की लाइफ से कैसे डिफरेंट रहेगा बहुत ही डिफरेंट रहेगा वो क्योंकि हमें कोई दबा नहीं रहेगा हम पे हम खुद अपनी मर्जी अपनी ज़िंदगी के खुद हकदार हो गए तो अभी कि, कि कौन कौन से दबाव हैं आप क्या नहीं कर सकती है इस सब बहुत कुछ नहीं कर सकते जैसे कि जैसे कि अगर शाम को हम देर से आएंगे ये लोग पकड़ते हैं मारते हैं अगर सुबह जल्दी जीतने के लिए बाहर ये लोग पकड़ते मारते हैं कहते हैं शाम के सात बजे से बाहर मत निकलना ऐसे ही बहुत सारे दबाव आपको है। क्यों लगता है वो क्यों बोलते हैं शाम के सात बजे से बाहर नहीं निकलने को ये क्या मुझे पता है तो उन्हें तो मालूम होगा मगर आप शाम के सात बजे से बाहर निकलना चाहेंगे नहीं हम नहीं चाहेंगे हमारे पापा डेडी होते हैं बाहर होते हैं वो काम पर होते हैं फिर देर हो जाते हैं उनको फिर मार पड़ना पड़ती है आपको आज़ादी का मतलब पता है आज़ादी आज़ादी का क्या मतलब है हम जो ब्रिटिश थे उसे आज़ाद हो गए और फिर फिर इसलिए ऐसी लड़ाई के बीच में लड़ाई हिंदुस्तान और पाकिस्तान तो आपके फादर किसके लिए लड़ रहे हैं पाकिस्तान के लिए कश्मीर के लिए देयर रिस्पॉन्सेज लेफ्ट आस परप्लेक्सड हाउ एवर दे डिड सब्सटैंशिएट आर थियोरी दैट देयर इन्वायरमेंट वॉज हैविंग एन ओवर पावरिंग इम्पैक्ट ऑन द चिल्ड्रन साइकोलॉजिकली लिविंग इन कश्मीर कॉट बिटवीन टू गन्स with bloodshed coloring your moods every single day you grasp the enormity of the burden the children carry 65 kilometers north of shrinagar lies the notorious district of bandipur when jammu and kashmir's ill equipped law and order machinery crumbled before well armed militants drunk on dreams of freedom the center was forced to move first the paramilitary and later the military in they were accommodated temporarily in government schools which they fortified with sandbags and bunkers there are schools but they don't get good education there if you go to like bandipura there are uh, from last one, one month people are like kids are not going to the school because the soldiers have occupied the school see why we go to school why we go to college to get education not to get yourself frisked by the soldier they frisk your books so when you enter the school soldiers frisk your books because they have to for the security reason whatever but like when you enter the school soldier frisk you so it goes in your mind so you can't study
آرمی اور ایڈمنسٹریشن کا معاملہ ہے سکول کے جو اساتیزہ صاحبان ہیں وہ اسے بالکل آلہ ہیں پر کیا یہ ریگلر ہے کہ آمی اپنا کیم پر ایک سکول لے کرے جی لگتا ہے انہوں نے ان کے پاس اب لگتا ہے کہ وہ کوئی طریقہ نہیں ہے نکلنے کا کوئی ارادہ ہی نہیں ہے ان کے پاس پر کیا یہ کشمیر میں کافی ہوتا ہے کہ سکولوں میں آمی جا کے بیٹھتی ہے نہیں ویسے تو پچھلے تین چار سال سے نہیں تھا پہلے جب سے یہاں حالات خراب تو ہوئے وائلنس جب سے شروع ہوا خراب حالات ہوئے ملیٹنسی ہوئی تو شروع ہی تو آرمی اب سکولوں میں انہوں نے دیرہ جمایا تھا لیکن پچھلے تین چار اسے سٹیٹ گورنمنٹ نے یہ فیصلہ کیا کہ سکولوں سے ہم آرمی کو نکالیں گے لیکن پتہ نہیں بدقسمتی سے جنوری میں ہمارے سکول میں اس آئی سکول نادیل میں آرمی آئی پتہ نہیں ان کا ارادہ کیا ہے وہ نکلنے والے ہیں ایڈمنسٹریشن جانے اور آرمی جانے یہ تو ہم کچھ بھی نہیں کہیں گے کہ بچے کیا کریں گے یہ پیرنٹس کو بھی سوچنا ہے ایڈنسٹریشن کو سوچنا ہے کہ سکول بند ہو جائے گا اور ان کا ریزلٹ کیا ہو جائے گا بچوں کا مستقبل بارحال تو ہم یہ کہیں گے بچوں کا مستقبل خراب ہو رہا ہے کیا ایسے بھی بچے ہیں جو آپ سکول بلکل آئی نہیں رہے ہیں ابھی کچھ بچے آ رہے ہیں جی ابھی کچھ بچے آ رہے ہیں جیسا کہ آپ کو بچوں نے کہہ دیا کہ ہم تب تک نہیں آئیں گے جب تک نہ اور بھی وہاں سے نکلے گی لیکن اب ہم نے یہاں پنچائز گھر میں سکول شروع کیا لیکن شروع کرنے کے ابھی بچے پورے نہیں آتے ہیں ساڑھے چار سو بچے نہیں آتے ہیں नहीं अबे हम उसको नहीं जाते हैं। वहाँ आर्मी है सब कहते हैं कि जब तक ना आर्मी निकल जाए तो हम उस टाइम तक उसको नहीं जाएं। तो अभी जब मार्च को जब स्कूल शुरू हुआ नया साल स्कूल का शुरू हुआ और पहले दिन जब आप स्कूल गए छुट्टियों के बाद तो वहाँ पे आपने आर्मी को देखा तो क्या आपके दिमाग में क्या आया? हमारे दिमाग में कुछ नहीं आया वो उधर सब ग्राउंड भी बर्बाद हो गया था सब उधर गंदगी बंदगी थी खेलने की जगह ले ली थी तो खेलने के लिए जगह भी नहीं थी हमको जी फ्राइडे 18 मार्च को हम फ्राइडे प्रेयर्स के लिए और ब्रेक के लिए हमने बच्चों को छोड़ दिया टीचर्स मुहात दो रहे थे बाथरूम्स में इबादत के लिए जाने के लिए तैयारी कर रहे थे तो इतने में हमने ब्लास्ट की आवाज़ सुनी और अंदर से हम बाहर निकले हमने बच्चों को चीखते हुए आते हमारे पीछे भागते हुए देखा हमने एक मैं हमारा वो एडमिशन का कमरा है छोटा सा है बहुत छोटा बच्चों ने मुझे वहाँ की तरफ जाते देखा तो सभी बच्चे वहाँ ही आ गए और इसके बाद वहाँ तो ऐसा लगा कि आउट ऑफ सफोकेशन हम मर जाएंगे बहुत थोड़ी सी जगह थी तो इतने में पता चला कि मोहसिन सरवर की मौत वाका हो गई है तो उसको भी ला के छोड़ दिया वो अभी थोड़ा थोड़ा कुछ बोल रहा था पानी पानी बोल रहे थे सब जैसे हम मर गए पानी तो ये पानी नहीं मिल गया पानी भी नहीं था पानी भी नहीं था उस टाइम तो इसके बाद चूंकि शैलिंग हो गई तो इसलिए हम बाहर नहीं निकल सके हम उस सर्वर को हॉस्पिटलाइज करते तो इसके बाद पुलिस आ गई वहाँ तो उन्होंने हमें जाने के लिए रास्ता दे दिया और अपनी गाड़ी में और उस टाइम पे आमी क्या कर रही थी वो कुछ नहीं वो बाहर बैठे हुए थे We drove a few meters ahead to the government high school, Nadihal. We waited outside for over an hour until the required permissions could be obtained from the army headquarters. <laughs>
Yeah, I'm the OC. So I'll just take a few minutes. I should take a confirmation from the headquarters. Finally, we were allowed into the school. तो ब्लास्ट होने के बाद सब लोग को आपको लॉक किया गया बच्चों के साथ In bloody Kashmir, where you live with death every single day, tragedies like these attract little acknowledgement or assistance from the authorities. Shocked and emotionally exhausted, we stretched the day to returning to Srinagar and visited blast victim Mohsin Yasin Khan at the Bones and Joint Hospital. <laughs> अच्छा ना बोर्ड पर गोस भी खाकर खाकर उपने आप मज़ ब्रांड्स निश्चित अदरा मार्श अपर इधर आ सकते साइज क्लास में से बेड ते ट्रेन आर वाले दोन गटन की ही पर कटिस पानी लड़को नेवर बरिकते हैं जी गाड़ी में ने बांडी पोरा सावस पाने का क्या अंदर हम्म इन्हें तुम अगर थे बंदे दोनों बटन तो इनको खून लास सुबह शनि में क्या है इस ट्रेलर के पेपर सर ये क्या Yeah. 
انشاءاللہ وار کر Mohsin is no isolated case, no exception to the rule. Though an extreme end of the spectrum, he symbolizes the fate all Kashmiri children brave every day. Tral was haunting us. We heard of a family where there was a case of enforced disappearance. NGOs say that over 3,000 people have disappeared in the last three years. Government figures are much lower. 13-year-old Mohammed Sofi, whose father had disappeared when he was just seven years old, spoke to us about his family and life. Father, do you remember your father? Yes. Sister, do you remember? Yes. We can see you a little bit. 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 सर आर में निवांत खाना सूत्र तर पत्र आम पत्र निवां बेचा त्रावन पत्नों को अकेले तर पत्र रोकने जो वर्षे तो निवां आर में वो निवां जी हम्म हम साथ एंड के लाइट न्यूक हम साथ करते थे कास्ट पत्र में सिर्फ क्या ही क्या तो सर सुनोग रात ये सुले न्यूक और वेज तो पत्तों को अष्ट्रावन पत क्योंकि ये तो उस पादुक का ये क्या सूत्रों हैं तुम्हारे दब सूत्रों हुआ है पत्रों को नितान पे तुम्हारे दब सूत्रों हुआ है अच्छा मुझे तो मुख होता है ना क्या है ना अच्छा मैं मैं तो इस दिन कश्मीर में चला आजकल ये तहरीक चले चला है ये काम करते चला है तो पता है क्या आज़ादी दिखा दे आज़ादी दिखा दे क्यों मिस नहीं आज़े दिख क्यों मिस हिंदुस्तान से चलाओ हिंदुस्तान से नहीं हम्म मैं तो आज़े दिख क्या गई तो ये पता आज़े दिख कट रहा हूँ आज़े के पांव में फौसले करूँ कुछ कुछ कर फौसले हिंदुस्तान तो पाकिस्तान हिंदुस्तान तो फौसले कट मुझे लेकर फौसले तो वक्त ये तो भी वो पां नौ नौ तेरी अश्कियां तो नौ नौ इसी के सही है आज दिन बेने कौशल में वाले बेचारे तुम्हारे हिंदुस्तान हम कश्मीर में तो रहो वो मतलब जिन खोवे चुस नीर वो सही है आज दिन बेम ये मुझे है पाना घर है अच्छा सही है सुबह तो अगर तब माने हिंदुस्तान या पाकिस्तान सिकाट कर सकते पाकिस्तान क्या है जी हर शिपान में ये मुल्क शिपान में मुल्क कितनी पान में मुल्क कश्मीर ना पाकिस्तान की पाकिस्तान की कश्मीरी बोल रहा है इसलिए अच्छा मैं मतलब इसका क्रैकडाउन चाहिए आप इधर आसन कोटा का कोई सस कोई सस का क्रैकडाउन दो दो ही रेड 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 आसन लांच पुष्ट उसमें क्रैकडाउन है उसमें कहाँ तलाशी आप पर जान वायन तो बेदिमा ने मन लोंडा वाला चुवा बन ना जो किधर का ना जो किधर हमारे मन ये तो काल मुझे है दस्ते तीन को दे तो वहाँ जो पर चुवा कौन सी पत्नी निवांती कौन सी निवांती तो पत्थर स्त्रामान अगर जो कुछ आदमी शब्द मुझे भी शब्द कुछ आदमी दफा आदमी वाले क्या जानते हैं 
مجا فایده یی بولی نه The absolute fearlessness and matter-of-fact responses of Sophie left us with a strange sense of finality. Opinion was undivided on the fact that gun culture is part of Kashmir's new generation. They grew up in the shadow of Kalashnikovs and it is a rare child who cannot differentiate between an AK-47 and an SLR. Experts believe education is the best tool to wean away the new generation from violence. The Jammu and Kashmir State Board of School Education had proposed an Education for Conflict Resolution project, dubbed Mobile Training Team in Values Education in India, which the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization was to help with. This was in 2001. A decision is still pending.
Was there hope for the children of Kashmir, or were they doomed to an end like that of their fathers? Did they have a choice? Their formative years jaded by harsh realities of living in a disputed region, often with one parent lost to the violence, disrupted education, lack of employment, and constant oppression from the militants and the security forces has pushed the children of Kashmir to a future of violence. How long would it take before the world outside recognized that the children in the valley were the collateral damage of the decades of bloodshed? In the meanwhile, this invisible Kashmir lives with a present that is imperfect and a future that is tense.